about food and how to slow down how fast the sugar is going into your bloodstream with food. So do we need to cut out our carbs? No, don't cut out your oh, carbs. Like that. Eat carbs, but eat good carbs. And I'll talk about that because even someone with diabetes, we are instructing them, don't not eat your carbs. Eat enough carbs, but spread them out throughout the day so that you are creating this nice even keel heel hill. And I'll explain that. I have a good slide on that in a second. Three macronutrients. Food is made up of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Some foods have all three, okay? Like a glass of milk. Whole milk has fat, protein, and carbs. But it's mostly carbohydrates, so we label it a carb. Avocado? Avocado is mostly fat, but there's a little bit of carbs, and we label that a fat. We don't call that a carb. Cake, we call it a carb. It's also ultra processed. Um, Twinkies, yodels, all that stuff. And then also Peace whole toast. grains, yodels. brown rice, baked potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh, oatmeal, quinoa, legumes, beans, fruits, good, natural from the earth carbs. The difference is that these carbs have fiber and the other ones do not. They've been very, very processed. They've been, you know, put in a machine and we, we process them and we take all the fiber out and clean them out and we destroy all the good nutrition, okay? So carbohydrates, again, quickest source of fuel. It's our main source of fuel. Um, let me see, what do I want to say? When we eat it, it goes into your cell, it makes energy. When you think of a marathon runner who is training or is about to run a marathon, they carb load. They will eat tons and tons of pasta because they're going to burn it off for energy. In fact, just sitting here right now, we're burning carbs. We're burning our carbs. We're not burning our fat. Fat takes a long time to burn off. It's much harder unless you're doing a keto diet. And that is, oops, mom. I took decongestant right before you came and now it's kicking in <laughs> and it's working. Um, so fat is another necessary macronutrient. We need it because it helps with brain development. It helps us absorb our fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, and it tastes good. It tastes really good. It brings joy to our meal, okay? Like, you can eat fat-free potato chips and they just don't do anything, but you eat a real potato chip and you're like, yum. So that brings in the whole, there's an emotional side of eating and there's a nutrition part of eating. We're going to talk about finding a balance between the two because it's not supposed to be all or nothing. Let's talk politics. <laughs> we are here. Whenever there's ex extremes, it makes headlines. Same thing with food. We have manufacturers and uh, coaches and um, uh, who else? The media that bring up and will tell you things because it makes headlines. They're the extremes. So we'll talk a little bit more about balance. So we need fat. It doesn't raise your blood glucose, but it is more than double the calories of a carbohydrate. It's also more than double the calories of protein. So a little bit of it is going to give you a lot more calories than a lot of carbohydrates without added fat or sugar or salt. Okay, so for example, a bowl of oatmeal is a lot of food for less calories than a half an avocado on your sandwich, okay, or just on your egg, with your eggs. There's a lot more calories, so we can end up overeating calories if we take in too much fat. The recommendations for fat are about three servings per meal. A serving is a teaspoon or one-eighth of an avocado. Oh, God. So, 
if you're doing three servings at a meal, that's three eighths or about a quarter of an avocado. A lot of coaches say, eat an avocado a day, it's really good for you, it's the best fat we have, and it is. But someone who dances or works out or is really active is probably burning those calories. Playing pickleball all day, you're maybe burning those calories. Someone who is in front of a computer or teaching classes eight hours a day or 10 hours a day is probably not burning off a whole avocado. And if I eat a whole avocado a day, even though it would taste good and it's a good fat, I probably wouldn't be burning it off very efficiently and I would gain weight. So we need to look at the big picture. We need about three servings per meal. So you go and you have a salad, you put a tablespoon of salad dressing or of oil on, then some vinegar seasoning, great. You do what the average American does and you put six tablespoons of salad dressing plus a bunch of nuts and bacon and cheese, you're probably getting in a lot more fat than our bodies need. There's good fat, there's bad fat, that's another presentation, okay? But more natural from the earth, vegetable sources are better than animal sources is the bottom line. Um, they don't raise your blood glucose, they taste good, a little bit with meals sounds good. Protein, my favorite macronutrient. Before you go on from fat, the fat, like if I had avocado toast instead of having oatmeal, mm -hmm. does it still destroy my, um, is it still making my blood cells, you know, is it not getting in to energize, it's being oh, no. stored? It gets stored before it's being used for energy, but you can combine your foods because having protein and fiber and fat together is gonna to help slow down how fast the sugar goes into your bloodstream. And I'll get to that in a second. Okay, but that. it's not doing yeah. damage. No it's damage. And I'm whatsoever. burning it off, you're otherwise burn, I'd be... It off. You probably need so that's calories. not the cause of my A1C nope. issue. Okay, mm -hmm. go on. Nope, definitely not. You gotta find out what's wrong with their A1C. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, protein, yes. meat, chicken, fish, eggs, cheese. Nuts, they're mostly fat, but they have some protein. Uh, seeds, same thing. Um, tofu, that's protein and carbs, but we can get protein from it. Beans are carbs with some protein. So again, a mixture. But protein foods also are, are necessary. They're needed for, um, they're the building block of life. They're needed for our muscle, muscle development hair, skin, teeth, glands, we need protein. That I know you're, you know. When we eat protein, again, it doesn't readily break down into sugar. And it helps slow down how fast the sugar goes into your bloodstream. So when we have um, instructing, when I'm instructing someone with diabetes what to eat, I'll say, try to get more natural carbohydrates that have fiber, eat lean protein and a little bit of fat preferably from vegetable sources or fish. And I will say, and then if you're still hungry, you should have more protein and vegetables because they're not gonna affect your blood glucose level. For most people, our bodies know what to do. Our bodies are the most incredible machines. So if you don't have diabetes and you don't have elevated blood sugar and you wear one of those continuous glucose monitors, you're gonna see that your blood sugar does this. And it's supposed to do that. When you eat food, prefer, or mostly carbs, your sugar goes up and that's exactly what it's supposed to do. It will take about an hour and a half to two hours for it to peak. And then it takes another three to four hours for it to come back down to normal. That's like four to five hours. And that's what our, our body's supposed to do. And for some reason, and I'll explain why, it's not just some reason. Many of the, like the people who are putting people on keto diets and diets and you know, oh, I have a cure for menopause, like that's bull. But they're saying, oh no, eat fat and protein and you won't spike, you won't have any elevation in your blood sugar. We're supposed to, that's mm -hmm. how our bodies work. We're supposed to have those Spikes. waves. Why is it like become a thing to say, no, we're gonna flatline. When you eat carbs, your body does exactly what it's supposed to do. It secretes insulin. Is secreting insulin bad? Is it gonna cause inflammation and ill health? No. 
if you are really sedentary and you're very, very overweight and you're eating lots of processed, ultra processed foods, yes, it is gonna cause ill health. It's gonna cause inflammation. But if you're active and you're out and about and you're trying to eat healthy most of the time and you think you're making good choices, you're not creating inflammation from too much insulin. That's what we do. That's how our body works. It's supposed to do that. It's okay. Okay, so I feel as though, like I see lots and lots of clients and they come to me, I can feel that I have inflammation. I'm like, really, how do you feel that? Like, like oh, I can tell that, you know? I'm like, well, what's, you know, and I'm, I'm curious. I'm like, how does that feel? What does that feel like? And I can tell you when I eat too much salt, I get really swollen and I feel like crap. Sorry. Or if I overeat, I feel like crap. Okay, there's a lot of things that make me feel like crap. Is that inflammation? I don't know. There's markers we can check to see if you have inflammation. Right now, I have inflammation, okay? But is it because of something I ate or is it from too much sugar? Probably not. Um, our bodies really do know what to do. So back to protein. When you eat protein, it breaks down into amino acids and our body uses them. In fact, if you eat more protein, you make more amino acids and your body uses them. In the past, we used to think that if you overate protein, you would risk kidney dysfunction. You end up with uh, um, kidney problems. But we realized that the studies we were looking at were of bodybuilders that were eating a ton of protein, but they were also taking steroids. Mm -hmm. And it was the steroids that led to kidney problems. It wasn't too much protein. So if you like protein, great, but when you eat more protein, not only is there more amino acids, which is fine, we use them, but it has a byproduct. And the byproduct is ammonia, uric acid, and urea. That's poison. Okay, but again, your body knows what to do. It's going to grab water from your colon, your intestine, or wherever. We're 60% water. It's going to grab water and dilute the uric acid, ammonia, and urea, and then you, ready? Urinate it out. Eureka. That's what urine is. Eureka. So when you're eating this high protein diet, you're drawing more water out. Is it going to hurt you? No. Are you going to lose water weight? Yes. Are you going to think this is the best diet in the world? Yeah. Wow. I went on keto. I lost eight pounds in the first week. Mm. No, I can't eat a carb. When I eat a carb, I bloat up. Well, carbohydrate. Carbs hydrate. They're made out of all, all of the macronutrients are carbon and hydrogen, but Carbohydrates are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So when you're adding that molecule of oxygen to your carbon and hydrogen, you're making water, H2O. So when you eat a high carb diet, you're more buoyant, your cells. Your cells are more buoyant. You are holding on to water that is healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're eating a high protein diet and a high fat diet, avocado and um, grilled chicken all the time, you are cutting out a whole group of carbohydrates and you're essentially walking around dehydrated. And that's why the second you go off your diet, which usually is when you're stressed or upset and you eat a plate of pasta, you're like, oh no, I can't eat pasta, it bloats me. Oh no, I can't eat potatoes, they bloat me. Well, those are also comfort foods. And when you eat them, you're probably eating cream sauce and cheese and butter and oil in your pasta or you're adding uh, the other fats like sour cream and bacon and, and cheese on your potato. And those are gonna get stored and you're gonna gain weight because of a lot of water, but you're probably not gaining weight from one bad meal. It's what you do over the long haul that dictates your health. So one meal isn't going to make or break you. If I overeat or go out and I eat something that I enjoy, I just say to myself, this is great. That added to the whole wonderfulness of this whole experience. I don't focus on, man, I, I really overate my fat and my unhealthy ultra processed foods. 
I just say, okay, I'll drink some water, I'll get rid of the excess salt, I'll be back to my usual. Or another thing to do, I'm gonna skip that and come back to it, is think about your blood glucose levels. I said that it takes about an hour and a half to two hours for your sugar to peak. It takes about three to four hours for it to come back down to normal. That's four to five hours. That's how long our bodies are meant to go between a meal. So if you start listening to your body's cues and you don't ignore them, you're gonna find that you get a pang of hunger at about four to five hours. So if you ignore it, it goes away. Our bodies just are amazing. And then you can ignore it for hours, but your blood sugar is gonna keep going down. And then by the time you do get to food, you're gonna be so hungry and irritable, maybe shaky, who knows, that you're not gonna make a good decision and you're probably gonna overeat. And then that's gonna bring your blood sugar up. And then you'll beat yourself up. I can't believe I just ate all that. And then the cycle is gonna keep going. But if you divide your food up throughout the day and you think to yourself, okay, what's, what's a healthy balanced diet look like? And I'll go through this in a second. And you say, okay, let's see if I can put this together and maybe make a healthy balanced meal eat enough food to make me comfortably full but not stuffed or if I don't know what comfortably full is because I've been so out of it or I put on weight and I have high sugars and I'm just not getting those hormones that are telling me I'm full which happens then you say this is what a healthy balanced meal should be I'll eat this and I'll wait if I'm really still hungry in another 20 minutes that 20 minutes really is the thing okay then I'll have a little more. But think about what it is and then go another four to five hours. Okay, I just made this up. That we're like electric cars, okay? You pulled up in your electric car. When you charge a car, you will go a certain amount of miles or you can go for say four to five hours. You then need to get to a charging station and you can either give yourself a little charge, which is a snack, and go another two to three hours or you can give yourself another supercharge which is a meal and get another four to five hours if you just do that little healthy snack not like a candy bar but maybe a banana and a little bit of walnuts i don't know that's what i carry um it's going to get you another two to three hours so you can actually plan out a healthy meal make a better choice or if you go to a restaurant you can actually not be so starving that you can make a healthy choice and if you listen to what your body's doing and know that you're supposed to feed it, it works. Um, let me think now. Let me talk about this and then I'll go back and <coughs> talk about all the different diets out there and why they do or don't work and, and debunk them all. Any questions so far? I do. Mm -hmm. I, um, banana. I was told it was the highest mm -hmm. fat, highest sugar fruit. Yeah. Bananas. Yeah. So we cut out a banana? Nope. Mm -hmm. a banana? We're supposed to eat sugar. It fuels us. It's filled with lots of good vitamins. It has a little fiber. So you're going to have it probably not by itself. If you have elevated sugar, you're going to have it with a little fat or a little protein because fiber, fat, and protein slow down how fast it goes into your bloodstream. I wore a continuous glucose monitor because we throw them away at Scripps when they're expired. So whenever they're gonna throw them away, I will throw it on. Okay. I found out. Can yeah. you get me one? I just, it just seems to me that yes. Good. what you're saying is that the extremes are no good. I mean, like, not to push you, but like she's become very vegetarian and doesn't want to because she's worried That's about not extreme. cholesterol. Cholesterol, and, but I mean, she, my husband too, very, uh, won't put a thing in his mouth that isn't perfect. Hasn't had cheese in years. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, my mother lived to 97. She ate everything. Good cheese. A very balanced diet. Mm -hmm. Never, never uh, was very overweight. You know, she lost the door. Pounds Shut the door. Uh, when she went to Seacrest, she gained six pounds. She lost those six pounds. But I, it just,